I want you to imagine me learning how to dance a different way. So I pick up my phone and I ask Siri for the best book on, on dancing, you know, and she pops up the book and I go to reading it and, and I go, oh, I can do that. So it says, sway here, so I sway. It says, twirl here, so I, I twirl. And then it, it actually tells you to make these little, you know, feet uh, patterns, put them on the floor, cut them out. And I did that and I got all the moves, you know, and I'm all doing good. So now I've got it down and I call Lydia in the room and I say, hey, honey, I am so awesome. You, you got to come here and see this. So she comes in, and, and she said, okay, go. And I said, okay. And I pick up my, my book, and I go to reading it. And it says, move here. So I move here, and sway here. So I sway, and, and I follow those patterns, and, and I'm so excited, man. I'm just, I'm just killing it, man. Plop down on the couch. I'm exhausted, but I'm so proud of myself. What do you think, honey? I executed that thing perfectly. She said, yeah, you executed it. You killed it. You killed it. Not killing it like Jim did the National Anthem last Sunday at the Lakers game either. You know what I mean? You killed it. And uh, she said, but you forgot something. You forgot the music. I said, what? I forgot. Oh, my gosh. I was so focused on the steps, the pattern, the rules that I forgot the music. And Lydia says, okay, let's try this again. So she puts on Adele. And she says, honey, now don't forget about the book. Put it down. You know enough of the steps by the rules. Now I just want you to follow the music with me. And man, we begin to move and groove. And I'm like, whoa, look at me. I don't even need the book. I'm amazing. I was amazing, right? I'm amazing. <laughs> Do you know sometimes we are prone to live by the book? to get all the rules and all the patterns, but we forget the music. We go to church on Sunday, we watch online, and we get all the, the life lessons, and we're, we're getting them in our head, or we get into a Bible study, and we're learning theology and doctrine, and, or we go to a, a recovery group, we're learning the 12 steps, or, or a peel the onion, or, or, or you know a, a freedom group. We're learning these steps to recovery. But then we go home, we flop down in bed exhausted because we're trying to live the rules and do live by the book without the music. What's the music? It's not what's the music, it's who's the music. The music is the Holy Spirit. Today, listen, the rules, the book is vital. How many of you know we better build our lives on the book, on the Bible, right? But if all you got is the Bible and you don't have the Spirit, you're not going to be able to live the life that God has for you. You'll have the patterns, you'll have the rules, and you'll have, you know, the steps to, to try to change your life, but you won't have the music to live it out. Over these next few weeks, we're doing this series on the Holy Spirit, and I tell you, I am pumped up about this, this series because I know God is going to transform some of your lives. You're going to go beyond just learning the steps and learning the rules, and you're going to experience the music of heaven in your life, and you're going to dance. You're going to get the joy back. Some of you lost your joy. You're going to get your joy back and get rid of that depression, and there's going to be a pep in your step. You're going to be able to change your lives. You're going to learn what it is to be led by the Spirit again. I'm really excited about this series. Here's the thing, you, you, you and I both want to change our lives. We want to grow and become, and, but it's going to take the music of heaven. Here's what the Bible says in, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It says this, I am sure that God who be... In fact, let's all read it out loud together in an anthem. Ready, go. I am sure that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. He's, he already started the work in you, but he's going to keep the work going on in you by the power of the Spirit, the music of heaven in your soul until one day you get to the end of the, your life and you, you open your eyes in the next life and there's Jesus who has helped you all the way through this life with the, with the Word and the Spirit, with the music of heaven. So how do we get, I'm going to make it real simple today to get this thing started. I want to give you, and Lydia wants to give you, 
How do you experience the power of the Spirit, the music of heaven in your life? I'm gonna give you the first two. The first one is this, and it's simply embrace the security of the Holy Spirit. Embrace the security of the Holy Spirit. Now, isn't it true that in any relationship, if there's security, the relationship can grow? But what happens if there's insecurity in the relationship and you're afraid somebody's gonna bail out all the time? You don't have space to make mistakes. So you, you guys know this, I'm married to my polarized opposite. We're really opposite in like 95% of things. In fact, she tells me all the time I'm temperamental. That's why we don't get along because I'm 10% temper and 90% mental. <laughs> I say she's wonderfully weird. <laughs> but the reason why we can spend 42 years together and we've worked through our rough patches and we've had, we've had lots of them when she was really you know, messing up and doing crazy <laughs> things. I had to really stay with her. <laughs> yeah, right. The reason why we can do that is because there's security in our relationship. She never thought for one time, and I never thought for one time, that we were going to bail out of the relationship. It created, even in the most difficult times, it created a space to grow and to become. Which is the same thing with your relationship with God. You have this relationship with your Heavenly Father, and He has called you, as we sang the song earlier, He calls you His Son. He calls you His daughter. He calls you a child of God in your identity is you are a child of God, and no matter how crazy you get and how many bad things you do in your life, he says, get up and try again. I'm not giving up on you. I'm not abandoning you. You stay with it. There's space and grace to become and grow. Where do you get that identity? Here it is. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, and when you believed in Christ, he identified you. Say this with me. He identified me. Make it personal. He identified me. He had identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us everything he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He has identified you as his child by giving you, and he's proven it to you, by giving you the Holy Spirit. Literally, another translation says this. It says, where, where he has identified you, it means he has sealed you. What does that mean? He has sealed you by giving you the Holy Spirit. Literally, when, when um, Ad, uh, Noah, I was going to put Adam and Eve in the ark. That's fun. Anyways, <laughs> Noah was going into the ark. The Bible says that God shut the door of the ark and he sealed it. He got him inside and he sealed it and you're staying in here. When you got born again, God gave you his Holy Spirit, the breath of heaven, the wind of heaven in your life, and he shut the door and he sealed it, and he says, you are mine from now on. I am yours from now on throughout all eternity. You are sealed as my child, as my son, as my daughter, and I'll never forsake you, and I will never abandon you. Man, that's good news. So, because that's true, does that not make you feel secure? I've got space to grow. I've got space to make mistakes. Man, I've done a lot of dumb things in my life. I really... <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. But when I have done dumb things, the Spirit of God has been there to let me know you're still God's child. Get up, repent, dust the dust, the, the, shake the dust off yourself, try again, and become. I'm just challenging you. You've got to find your identity in who you are, and that's given to you by the Holy Spirit. The second thing, jot this down, educate myself in who the Holy Spirit is. Educate myself in who the Holy Spirit is. Why is this important? If you're going to receive the music of heaven in your life, why is this important? Because there's so many myths 
about the Holy Spirit and misinformation about the Holy Spirit. It's just not true, but so many people shy away from the Holy Spirit because of this. Man. Again, I was raised in a classical Pentecostal church. My mama's down front, and she knows what I'm saying is true. In this Pentecostal church, I am so grateful for so much that I learned and experienced. On my way to church today, I was giving thanks to God for my upbringing because I learned about the power and the presence of the Spirit. However, there was some weird stuff that happened in that little Pentecostal church. Oh, my gosh. Anybody else raised in a classical Pentecostal church? Oh, my gosh. I mean, Mama's here. She knows. We've talked about it. But, there, I mean, the Holy Ghost showed up, and things got ghostly. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, whoa. Listen, the Holy Spirit is, is mysterious enough. Even otherworldly, you don't have to make him any more weird. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I'm just saying to the human mind, the Spirit is strange. By the way, today's Halloween, All Saints Day. There's going to be a lot of talk about ghosts. But I want to tell you, this is something recent with me. I've been calling the Holy Spirit more often the Holy Ghost. And I haven't done that since my childhood because it's what I was raised in. Some of the stuff that was, the hey, Holy Ghost, ooh, well, I'm going to go to the Holy Spirit. Do you know for the last three or four months, I started calling the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost a little bit more? What shifted? This pandemic shifted me. It shifted something in our world. Our world's not the same. And our world, even unbelievers, are beginning to understand there's something bigger going on here than we can understand. That there's a spirit world going on out there that's bigger than us. There's angels, there's demons, there are things going on. If you're going to make it through this world and make it thriving, not surviving, you better not try to do it in just your own strength, your own wisdom, your own power. You need power from another world. That is the Holy Ghost of heaven. And the Spirit will change you and transform you. You'll have the music to dance when you have the Spirit of God in your life. So that means you got to get to know Him. So for, listen, for so long in my walk with God, when I first became a pastor, I, I shied away from I backed off. I became a good Baptocostal, you know. You know, I, privately I would ask God to fill me with the Spirit and I would believe in the, the gifts of the Spirit and all that, but publicly, man, mm -mm, no, because every time I did, some weirdo would come in here and do something stupid. True story, true story. No, really, they're out there, trust me. And anyways, early 90s, I went to a pastor, Jack Hayford's conference, and Jack Hayford taught about the Holy Spirit in a way I said, that's the Bible. That's who the Holy Spirit is. And I re-engaged again in the power of the Spirit. And I began to invite the Spirit back into my heart, my life, and my ministry. You see, I had been dancing, but without the music. But from that point on, and for the last 30 years, I've been dancing to the music. And any good thing that come, that's come out of my ministry at New Life, it's not me. It's a power greater than me. It's the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Get to know the Spirit. And one of the ways you can do that, we put it in our, our church app in the sermon notes. There's a little list of things called getting to know the Holy Spirit. Take time this week, study it, read. I put it there for your benefit, okay? Come back Wednesday night. I'm going to be teaching at our first Wednesday about the baptism with the Spirit. And I'm going to be praying a spirit baptism prayer of blessing over you. And some of you are going to be baptized for the first time in the Spirit. Some of you for the hundredth time, but you just need to be rebaptized in the Spirit. Come back Wednesday night, all right? Now, my lady, come on. You ready? Right. Let's give some honor to the first lady of this house, would you? Thanks, baby. Go get her. Right. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that, did y'all? He said, in conclusion. <laughs> all right, let's keep it going. The next thing is engage the Holy Spirit. Engage the Holy Spirit's power. We have to engage his power in our life. Now, Jesus is our example to live by, but the Holy Spirit is our power to live by. We have to have his power in our life. Ephesians 3 and 6, 16, boy, that was a slip of the tongue, wasn't it? Woo, 
See, it's your fault. You said in conclusion. Uh, all right. Read this out with me. Okay, Ephesians 3, 16. Ready, set, go. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. Do we have limited power? Yeah, we have. But does the Holy Spirit have limited power? No, he has unlimited power. How do we get this mighty inner strength? We do it by asking for the Spirit. We do it through the Holy Spirit in our lives. The other morning I was... I uh, had a bunch of errands to run, and I got up, and I was running around doing some stuff. And have you ever just woke up in a funk? You know, you start your day, and you're in a funk. Like James said last week, do I, let, do I wake up grumpy, or do I just let her sleep? Yeah, well, I was that person that morning. And I mean, and then when I get grumpy and I'm driving, I fuss at every single driver in the world. Do y'all know? Yeah, because nobody knows how to drive but me, right? Y'all know how that is. And so I'm like, oh, come on, get out of my way, you stupid idiot. Yeah, I'm a pastor, but I can still say things like that because I'm human too. But, um, and so I'm like grumping and gropping, and all of a sudden, which I know Christ was already in the car with me because he lives in me, but it was like he climbed in the seat beside me. And as clear as day, I heard him say, so is this going to be your attitude all day? And I went, well, how rude. <laughs> Who invited you into this car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about just as plain as day. And then I heard him say, Lydia, it's your choice. You can have joy throughout this day, or you can go ahead and stay in this funk. But the, you have to ask for the Spirit's power to help you. And so as he began to speak to my heart, I realized that there were some things just going on in me, and I just needed to be with a friend. So I called Dava and said, Dava, how about you come and go to breakfast with me? And so me and Dava went to breakfast and we just hung out and we laughed together and we talked and we cried together and sat there for about two and a half hours. And when I got done, guess what? The rest of my day was great. And I got a whole lot more done than I would if I'd stayed in that funky attitude. But what happened? I forgot to ask for the Spirit's power. I think that's what happens with us so many times is we forget to ask for the spirit of the power, like James said, or the power of the spirit. Like James said, we're, we're dancing through the day, but we're dancing without any music, and it's not very much fun. You know what? When I ask for the spirit's power in my life, what I find out is that I'm not so concerned with people's opinion of me. I'm not so concerned with what's going on, the turmoil around me. Or even this morning, as we're leading in worship, I don't get so concerned about hitting every single note just right or doing every single timing just right. Just ask Jim, I missed a couple of them. You know what? I'm not so concerned with that. Why? Because I'm just allowing the Spirit. I've already done the work. Now let the Spirit do the work through me. I'm not so nervous if attendance is up or if it's down today or if this light stops people from coming and going. Whatever. Guess what? What I realize is I have no control over that whatsoever. I have to have the Spirit's power in my life. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now glory be to God by his mighty power at work within us. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we could ever dare to ask or think. We need his mighty power at work in us. It's kind of like this. If I was going to go chop down a tree today, Christy, I'm going to need you here in just a minute. If I was going to go chop down a tree today and I started with this, how far am I going to get? Not very far, am I? I ain't going to have no fire burning tonight because I ain't going to have no wood to, to burn. No, and this is what we do. And we go through and we're chopping at that tree and we're chopping at things in our life. And all of a sudden we're finding ourselves, man, we're wore out. We're sweating bullets and we're wondering why we're getting nowhere in our life. It's because we're doing it without the power of the Spirit. Come on up here, Christy. And I promise I won't hit you. And I promise to y'all in the front row, I won't throw this like James did those balls last week. <laughs> but when I have this in my hand, and I have this on the end of it. What happens? Then when I begin to chop at those things in my life, I have power. Why? Because I've engaged the cutting edge of the Spirit in my life. Without Him, I have no edge. I have no power. I have no passion. I have nothing to combat the enemy with. But when I come at the, at the, the things in my life that are overpowering me, and I come at them with this. No, I'm not in an axe throwing contest, so don't worry. But I, when I come at them with this, 
There's something different that happens in our life. And can I tell you, there's so many times in my life that I've come with this, trying to do something and wonder why my life isn't working. I come with this other one instead of this one and wonder why my life isn't working out. There was a time in my life when I tried that very thing. It was a time in my life when James had just found out he had AFib. And I had a friend who was melting down. And I had another young girl I was trying to help come out of drugs and out of a homosexual lifestyle. And I'm trying to help her. And our son John's going through a divorce. And God ain't moving fast enough for me. And so I'm going to fix all of them. Now, I didn't say that with my mouth. But my actions said that. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all have done the same thing. I'm going to help God out because I, you know, I think he needs some help. He must be busy with other things today, so he needs my help. <laughs> and so I'm going to fix it for all of them. I'm going to make everything peaceful so James don't die with a heart attack on me. And I'm going to make everything better so John's heart isn't so broke. And I'm going to make everything better for this young girl so that life is smoother for her. I'm going to make everything better for my friend who's melting down. I'm going to make everything better. And guess what? I hit the wall face first and ended up flat on my back. Why? Because I was doing it all through my power. I'm beating at the world with this. And when I hit that ground, I'll never forget that night because Jesus told me, Lydia, in the garden, what did I do? I said, God, not my will, but your will be done. I relied on the power of the Spirit I had to have the power of the Spirit to go to where I was going. Lydia, you have to have the power of the Spirit to go to where you're going. God brought some of you here today to hear that. You have to have the power of the Spirit to go where you're going. Well, how did Jesus say, in my name, you will do greater things than I even done? How is that possible that we're going to do greater things than Jesus himself done? Because the power of the Holy Spirit was in Jesus. And when he rose again from the dead and then he ascended back to heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit. It now lives in all of us. It's in all of us. We just have to ask for that power. And when we say, Holy Spirit, we need your power, then there's something mighty that happens in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we look at life different. We, we come at life differently. The Bible tells us don't be drunk with wine. We're in his excess. In other words, over and bound. It's not coming. It's not talking about drinking. What it's talking about is excess in our life. Can I tell you over this last year, I have an excess of food. <laughs> yeah, I have fed my depression with being locked in a house. And I got 20 pounds to prove for it that I've got to now try to get back off and lose the other 20 I already had to lose. Y'all know what I mean, right? Because what? We feed our emotions. We do things to try and feed ourselves and feed those dry spots instead of in listing the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and when we do that he fills us like nothing else can not like wine can not like food can not like a person can sex can it don't matter there's nothing else that can fill us like the Spirit and we have to enlist his power in our lives because it's what makes the difference we're no longer then con controlled by our sinful nature we're controlled by the Spirit of God that's living in us the Bible says and the next thing we have to expect the Holy Spirit to bring healing and freedom. Expect the Holy Spirit's healing and freedom in our lives. How do we expect the healing or, or, or get the experience the healing of God in our life by simply expecting? I got a question to ask you today. How's your expector? Say, Lydia, that's not a word. It is today, okay? How is your expector? Are you expecting things or is your expector expired? <laughs> Are you expecting things in your life to happen? Or has it expired? You've got to have God's power in your life. Let me ask you a question. Does, when Jesus in the, uh, the, heals you, does it happen instantly or is it over time? It's a trick question. It's both ways. It's both ways. In my life, when I was a child and I was born two and a half months premature, God instantly healed me. One minute my lungs weren't developed, the next minute, as y'all can see, they were. God healed me. My dad at 23 years old was crippled with crippling arthritis, could not even roll himself over in bed. My mom had to roll him over. He walked everywhere on crutches or a wheelchair. And one night at church, God instantly healed him. He threw down the crutches and took off running in that church. That's instant. But can I tell you, 
Yeah, but so many times in my life, it hasn't happened instantly. It's happened over time because I believe over time, it builds our faith. Over time, we begin to grow. Over time, we begin to change. Over time, we get this believing and expectancy in God that we don't have if he'd done it instantaneously. Why? Because he's growing us and maturing us and forming us and shaping us into the image of his son. And that only happens through the power of the spirit in our life. There are some of you that are here today and God has began this healing process in you and you're like Lydia and you think you can do it better. You think, well, maybe God's busy doing something else. But God brought you here today to say, enlist the power of the Holy Spirit. Trust the process of what he's doing in your life. And trust that that cutting edge is making the cuts it needs to cut. In just a few minutes, that tree is going to come tumbling down. That obstacle in your way, that addiction in your way, that relationship, whatever it may be, through the power of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be chopped down. But you've got to have patience because it may not happen on that first chop. It may not happen on the second. It may seem like you're chopping for a while. But can I tell you, when you enlist His Spirit, listen to me, when you enlist His Spirit, there's something that's going to happen. Even today, when you say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need your power. I need it. I don't just want it, but I need it in my life. I confess my need for you. And this week, I promise you, because it's not my promise, it's his promise. I promise you, you're going to see some things begin to break in your life because the Spirit is going to enable you in a way you haven't felt in a very long time or some of you never in your life let's pray together Jesus Christ right now we admit that we need your spirit God move across this room some of our expectors are broke and God I ask right now that you renew that faith in us Breathe fresh flame across it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For some of you, you've never even invited Christ into your heart and into your life. And you know, that's the first step that we need to make today. It's saying, God, I need you in my life. I invite you in. Holy Spirit, I need your power. If that's you right now, I want to simply ask you to raise your hand and let me know you're going to pray with me. And we're all going to say this prayer together. If that's you, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to just shoot your hand up already. One, two, three. Shoot your hand up. Say, Jesus, I want to invite you into my heart and in my life. I need your power. I admit today, I need your power. New Life, let's say this prayer with them. Holy Spirit, I invite you into my life. Jesus Christ. I believe that you died at the cross for me. And I believe that you rose again. And I believe that you sent your power to change my life. I ask you now to fill me full of your spirit, to allow me to change my life, to bring healing into my life. In Jesus' name. Now for the rest of you, I wanna ask you a question. There are some of you that you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've been hammering your way at something and you're wore out. And God brought you here today to make a change for you to walk out of this building different than when you walked in. And I'm going to ask you to be bold because now I'm talking to believers. Even if you just gave your heart to Jesus, I'm talking to believers. And I want you to stand right now and allow me to pray over you and enlist the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Be bold enough to stand Say, God, I can't do this anymore on my own power, my own strength. I need you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Holy Spirit, we invite you in right now. <laughs> 
we admit our need for you, for fresh wind, for fresh fire. Oh, blow across this building right now as only you can do. And God, there's people here today that feel like there's nothing but ashes left in their life. But Holy Spirit, <laughs> you don't see ashes, you see embers. And I ask right now, as your spirit blows across us, God, may you renew, reflame the fires in our heart. Help us to enlist the power of your spirit, that all-consuming power. God, that will help us and enable us to make changes, to have faith, to expect you to move in our life. God, in this week, every morning when we get up, may we choose to enlist the power of your spirit for that day, for that moment, for that minute. God, for our lives. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you move in a way that only you can move. Move in our relationships. Move in our jobs. Move in our homes. Move in our children. God, move across us in a way that we haven't felt in a very long time. And we forgive you, and we ask for your forgiveness for the times that we have grieved your spirit and not enlisted your spirit. And today, we repent before you and say, we need the power of the Spirit in our lives. Holy Ghost, we need you. We need you. We need you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>